Hi, my name is Marcel Westberg, and this is a combined presentation of 2.3 and 2.4 of the Practibar course package. And it's dealing with the online resources for DNA analysis and the interpretation of the BLAST results, which is done in the online resources. So we discussed the different online resources like NCBI, Bolt Systems, and QBank in this presentation. And we take a case of Liriomyza hydrobensis, which is the P leaf minor, as an example how you analysis the C1 sequence of this organisms. So you see here the C1 sequence. So we first go to NCBI, so also called GenBank. GenBank contains more than 260,000 species and contains many loci from all organism groups. And to perform a BLAST, you can do this on the website, which is shown right here. So we're going to this website by clicking on it, and now we are at the NCBI BLAST website. So you see here different BLAST options, uh, like nucleotide BLAST, um, but you can also do a protein BLAST, so you have your nucleotide sequence, which is BLAST against a protein database, or you have a protein which is blasted against a translated nucleotide database. And you can also have your protein, which is blasted against a protein database, which is called BLAST-P. So I go to the nucleotide blasts, and then you come to this BLAST suite. So again, you see here your BLAST N, but you can also go again to BLAST-P for protein, protein analysis, or the BLAST-X, which you have in your nucleotide against the protein data database, or you have your T-BLAST-N, which is if you have a protein and you search into a DNA database, which is translated to protein, or you have your DNA sequence, which is then translated into proteins, and you search a nucleotide database, which is translated into proteins, which is called then a T-BLAST-X. But then we go back to BLAST-N, because that is used when you have a nucleotide sequence and you want to compare it to an other nucleotide sequences. So I take my sequence, which I put here in the, another file, and I'm going to copy that one. And so you can copy that into this field. So you can uh, use different sequences at the same time, as long as you put it in a faster format. So for instance, you can put in here your Sequence one, sequence one, and then below A, T, C, G, and then you can do another one, sequence two, sequence two, and the sequence. So, and you can do multiple sequences at the same time. But, so in this case, we only have one sequence. Copy that in. And this is our sequence right here. So you also have the possibility to upload a faster file. And you can also give your job a title, but that's not really necessary to do. So here um, you have to choose which database you want to have to look in. So we use the nucleotide collection. It is, but you have different options to search in. But for normal DNA barcoding, we use this nucleotide collection. Then you have the possibility to 
enter an organism name here. Yeah. So if you don't do that, then you search the whole uh, database. But for instance, you can put in here uh, Diptera. Yeah. And then it only looks to Diptera sequences. Um, you can do another one if you want. But you also have the possibility to exclude sequences. So if I add exclude here, then you exclude all Diptera sequences. Sometimes this helps to see if you get hits from a very strange sequence which you don't expect there. Um, so you can search only for that specific uh, species. And so you can see if there is a misidentified sequence into the gene. But for now, I'll take it away. And then we go to different program selections. So on default is Megablast, which is used for very similar sequences. So this is what we use for DNA barcoding because you're looking to a very close relative sequence. So if you don't find any sequence, it's quite rare, you can go to discontinuous mega blasts. And if you don't find any sequences, you can look to sequences of more distinct relatives if you can find sequences. In this case, you use blast n. Yeah. Normally, you use the default mega block. So, there are some other options you can add. Like here, you can use algorithms, different algorithms, but those are quite set. Those parameters are quite set by using this mega block. Yeah. Like you also have the possibility to get more um, outcome sequences or, or less, but on default, this is just how much. So what we're going to do now, we use BLAST. Yeah, so we can click on BLAST um, to get our output. Sometimes this can take just a few seconds, like it's doing now. Sometimes it takes a couple of minutes, it's depending on how busy the database is. So then we got this overview. You can see which database we have used to search in the program, which is used. The sequence we put in that was a nucleic acid sequence and that it has a length of 658. Nucleotides. Then you get a score right here. So you have your different uh, hits right here. Yeah. And you can go over it to see which um, sequence this is. Yeah. So you have, for instance, we go here. Yeah. So you get Leary meets a hydrobins cytogram oxidase. Yeah. And Basically, the color gives it's the, the bit score. I come later to that. What that means? Yeah. So the so if you get red sequence, you know you have quite high bit score and are good sequences. So if you scroll down, you get a hit table. Yeah, and you get the sequences with the max score will be on top and you get the name and the accession of it. So just to be sh to give you a remark here, so the max score is on top, and also the lowest E value is on top, but those are uh, based on each other. And here you get the identification, and which is in this case 100%. But it is not always that the Top hit is also the one with has 100% identity. Yeah, so you can also sort them. So you say, okay, I want them sorted on identity. So you can click on that. 
and then you see so now they're all here 100 percent and then they're becoming less but so now they are not scored anymore on max score so this is then what you see and you can go through it and you see all the Orimitsa hydrobenses and then you got Leo Orimitsi Langier right here which says down 95% so Leo Orimitsa hydrobenses is 100% till 99% identical and you have a coverage of 100% to here 72% yeah, so or even one with 68%. And so this means not that the, you have very low coverage because the sequence is different from each other, but probably because the sequence in the gem bank is shorter than our sequence we have lost. It. So now I go back to uh, the presentation. And so here again, you see here the top of uh, the hit table. And I just want to say what the max score and total score means. So you have here, so the max score means the highest alignment score called bit score between the query sequence, so that's your sequence, and the database sequence segment. And the total core is the sum of all bit scores of all segments. Because sometimes you have your sequence just aligns to two separate sequences and they both get a bit score. And then the max the total score is the sum of those bit scores. So then you see here an example how um, settings of a alignment can differ for instance here we have showed that a for instance, you have setting a cap penalty so you have two sequences which are aligned here um, with a cap penalty of zero yeah, so that means when you make caps in your alignment you don't get any penalty for that you get a similarity here of 54 percent and a score of 135. So if you get a cap penalty of 5, you see the alignment shows that there are less caps because for each penalty for each cap you get a penalty. So the identity is now 59%, so that is more than you have here on top. And but your score, the bit score it's less. And if you get an another penalty of large, so it's 10 right here, then you get an alignment without any penalty, but with a lower score and also with a lower identity, but not necessarily the wrong alignment. It can be that you have just a sequence which is from a different part of the CO1 sequence than what is in GenBank. Yeah. So it's very important that you need to know that what you see in an alignment is not necessarily the best hit. So then you have your coverage. I already told a little bit about coverages, so that's the percentage of query length that is included in the alignment segment. And the identity is the percentage of identical bases in the alignment. And you have the E value, and that's called the expect value, and that's a parameter that describes the number of hits one can expect to see by chance when searching a database of a particular size. Yeah, so when you see here, the S is the bit score. So the E value, uh, based on the bit score, you get a E value. So now we're going to talk a little bit about trees. 
because it's not only based on identity, what you see, and similarity. Also, trees are very important for identification based on sequence. So here you see a outgroup root tree, and here you see different. So this is called a branch. This is called an external node, a node, and this is called the root. So here you see a, it's called a polytomy. So you have different species, of one specimens, yeah, so they come into one group. And here you see non-specific, non-species specific ones. So you have species four and five in one clade. And those ones are called monophyllet. So you have Species one here, species two here, species three here. Yeah. So they all come in a clip. And so what we call it here, so this is our unknown sequence. It falls into a species specific clade. And that is quite important. So if it falls in a species specific clade, you can say, okay, falls in species specific clade. So it's very likely to be that species. So here you see a mid-rooted tree. It's basically the same tree. And here you see a mid-pointed rooted tree. And in this case, you see here polyphyletic clades. Here you have species one, but also a species one right there. Yeah? But still, our unknown falls in species specific clade. Yeah. So, because you have two clades right here, doesn't mean that you can't identify your unknown. Yeah. So, when an unknown sequence cluster has a sister, so next to it, you see here now in the middle, you have an unknown with cluster as a sister of species two, yeah. Um, then we say, so, so this can either be a variation of species two, or you have just an, an, an other species, which is not in GenBank or any other databases. Yeah? And so in this case, you really don't know what it is. And so you have to be more conservative. Yeah? I'm going to, for instance, if species two and three here right are from the same genius, you identify them then only on the genius level. So we go back to our um, blast output, and we want to see how our sequence falls into a tree. So you can make a distance tree of results right here, and you can click on there. And so you get a tree. So this is then a fast minimum evolution tree. But if you like, you can also get a neighboring joining tree. So you see it's, uh, you have to expand them because here you have 23, flies in it and you can't really see me you have 14 and your unknown falls in there so you can't really see what it is so the first thing you have to do is to put the sequence label on taxonomic name so that you only see the name it makes it easier to see and then here by tools you can expand your tree so you can zoom in now your tree um, and you can go through. But another thing is do what you can do is just download it as a PDF file. And so create PDF and then you open your PDF. And then you search for your unknown. And there it is. 
Now here's my M down and it falls nicely into a Gloria Mitsa Hyrobensis clade. Yeah, so my unknown is very likely to be Leomitsa Hydrobenzo. Now we go to Bolt Systems. So Bolt Systems contains also, just as NCBI, more than 260,000 species. Um, but instead of NCBI, it only contains CO1 sequences of animals, ITS sequences of fungi, and RBCL and not K for plants. And as we know, ITS is not always enough for species identification and RBCL only useful for genius identification because RBCL is too conserved um, in a genius. And Matke has another problem. Matke is a very good uh, it's very diverse, so it's very good to distinguish between species. But it is so diverse that you can't make universal barcode primers, which makes it not a very good barcode. Yeah. So the blast you can do on both systems. So we go to both systems. And here is the bolt systems. And we can go to the identification tool right here on the top. And then you see you come here at the tap animal identification for CO1. But if you want to do fungal identification, you can do here the ITS or plant identification, RBCL or NOTK only. So we have a CO1 sequence, so we go to the animal identification. And you have here four different options to search in. And on default is the species level barcode records. So with this database, it gives you a species name as outcome. So in case you don't get any outcome right there, you can go to all barcode records yeah, and you can search all barcode records in bold, but then you also get uh, records without a species name. We go for the default species level barcode records and we enter our sequence here by copy and pasting it in. And it's very important here, um, which is not so important for by NCBI, is that you have your CO1 sequence in the right orientation, so from 5 prime to 3 prime. If it's in the other direction, if it's reverse complement, you will get no output, or you get output from a totally different organism. So be aware of that. So we submit. The sequence. Also here we have to wait a few seconds and sometimes it's a little bit longer than other times. Also it's depending on how busy the website is. And there we go. And the nice thing is here is that it gives you on top the uh, sequence, so this is our unlabeled sequence, our query ID, and here you get the best hit, Neuromita hydrobensis. And also the nicest thing here is that you get a sentence, the submitted sequence has been matched to Neuromita hydrobensis. And then this identification is solid unless there is a very closely allied congeneric species that has not yet been analyzed. But then it says also such cases are rare. Yeah, so in this cases it tells you. So if it comes with, sometimes it can have that you have two matches and then it will also say it has been matched to species A or and species B. 
And here below you have the top 20 matches, which is all the Oriomitsa Hydro Advances. You can extend that by taking the top 99, for instance. And then you got more output. Yeah. And here you see Hydro Advances is still 99.32% identical. And Leo Mitsa Lange is 94.65. And here you have also the status, so some sequences are published and other are early released or private, and you don't have access to that. So basically, you can, for instance, you can click on here and it brings you to that specific record. So you can also make trees and in both systems, but that's only possible for the C1 database, or not for the Fungi and the Plan database. So you have here your tree-based identification, and you can click on there. And waiting for here, so we want to download that tree. And it opens a tree, so and you see here nicely your tree. Here is our unknown specimens right there, and you see it falls in a Leomitsa hydrorensis clade. And Leomitsa langiae is here as a different. So one drawback of both system is that you can't see any alignments, but what you can do, for instance, you can go to, to click on, on the hit if it's public available, and you can see the sequence right here, and you can download that or copy or paste the sequence in your own uh, software analysis software and align them from there. Another option is that you go to the taxonomy here on the top and you go to Lirio Mitsa. So then you get all the statics here of all the Oriomitsa specimens. And you see the how many records there are, how many sequences there are, and some of them are public. You can go to public data and from the public data you got here all the sequences. And so you can click Check the box if you want, and then go to faster, and you get a file of faster sequences. Or you want them all, and then you don't check any box, and then click on faster, and you got your faster download here on the bot. And then you can open that in Notepad, for instance, and you get your faster file right there. So QBank, QBank contains AU regulated plant pest species and their close relatives. So there are several loci per organism group, um, but not for atopods, but they only have C1 sequence, but for bacteria, fungi, invasive plants and nematodes, there are sequences of different loci and those loci are also included in the Apple standard on DNA barcoding BM798. So there are also viruses in GeneBank and the sequences of those are the whole genomes. So the blast you can do on this website, um, you can also do multi-locus blast, um, which is explained in a different presentation. 
So we go to QBank. So this is the main page of QBank. Every um, organism group has his own web page. And he, you can do by ID, you can do a identification against all QBank sequences. You can also do that uh, on the web page of the organism group. So this is the arthropod web page, and then you can do identification here, um, either against all QBank sequences or only against arthropod sequences. So I go to BLAST against all QBank sequences. Then here on the top, you have to read the disclaimer and agree with it with, to, by clicking on um, checking the box. Yeah, so here you see all the different bases, databases which are on. And here on um, this box, you paste your sequence and you start the alignment. So you got here your pairwise alignment, and so you got top hit against based again against scores. And you see here 100% similarity with Leo Mitsa hydrobenses. So you go down, and here is your first hit with another Leo Mitsa, Leo Mitsa Brioniae, with 92% identity. You can click on here on the right to show the alignment. So if your alignments and um, which are basically the same as you see in NCBI. You can also make trees and so you can here draw trees. And you have all different kinds of flavors trees. Yeah, so I'll take just the top one, you have Kamoa tree, and then you see a tree. This is my data. And here you see that my data clusters with very old Leromita hydrodensis. Yeah, so you can if you go over it, you see you can click on one of those specimens. And that brings you to that record and all the information to that record. So I go back to my presentation and just to show you a little bit the glossary about QBank versus NCBI. Yeah, so again, you have score, so the score is the max score. Again, as you have an NCBI, you have in QBank the probability, which is the same as the E value in NCBI. The similarity is the same as the identity, and the overlap here is the same as coverage in NCBI. You also can see the direction. So if your sequence is oriented in the same direction as the sequence in the database, and you have a kind of rating here. Yeah. So you get, if your probability is zero, you get a one star. If your fragment is only one, you get one star, and et cetera, et cetera. So and you can get all those stars together, and you get a five star rating. But that is not the most important thing. So basically, the score and the similarity and the overlap are the most important things. Okay, thanks for watching this uh, presentation.